get started. So I'll talk about Dataverse for journals uh, and or how a Dataverse a data repository can help journals and journal editors to make data accessible. Uh, uh, we, well, over the last uh, decade uh, at the Institute for Quantitative Social Science at Harvard University, we've developed a data repository framework called Dataverse. And I'll give a first a, a, a short introduction of what Dataverse is about for those of you who don't know. But, and then I'll talk more about uh, the application for journals. So uh, Dataverse started from the recognition that science requires community access to data. And what we provided is a technology solution for this. And a, a, the solution is an open source uh, data repository framework that uh, helps publish, cite, and um, uh, archive uh, research data. It, it does that by giving first credit to the data authors through attribution for data citation and to the distributors of journals or our archives. Uh, it also follows the, the, well, the infrastructure, the framework fro follows best practices and how to do, uh, how to preserve data, the data sets once they are deposited uh, and, and provide metadata standards, uh, protocol and API standards uh, that, uh, that are usually used in, in data management and data archiving. And so it's now already widely used uh, around the world and and in a way, we've been part of what started some years ago when uh, I used to go to a few talks like that, but there were much fewer workshops or conferences that care about uh, making data accessible. And, and at this point, it seems that it starts to be a cultural change, actually. And, and many researchers and institutions, are, are and, and obviously journals, are aware that this is an important part of the, the scholarly communication and scholarly uh, publication. So it's, a, it's an exciting thing to be, have been part of this change. And of course, there is a lot to do still uh, for reproducibility in research, but, uh, but it's a step forward. So um, briefly, just to understand what Dataverse is about, the Dataverse uh, repository contains multiple Dataverses. One Dataverse is a, is a basically container of data sets, and a data set is more than just a data file uh, because it needs some context, it needs some metadata, uh, some, some description about what the data is about, and also additional files, are, as you were describing sometimes, a data file is not, is not sufficient if you want reproducibility, you, m you might have some code, some documentation, any, any uh, thing else that accompanies the data set to, to be able to understand an inference from, from that data. So uh, with the new Dataverse, which is Dataverse 4.0, we've, uh, we've improved the usability, the, the data publishing workflows, and also uh, we've worked on uh, upgrading the technology uh, behind uh, to, to use the very latest technologies on, uh, for a, a web application enterprise solution. Uh, we've been using a Java framework, Java Enterprise Edition framework for a long time, and the latest UI framework to also bring UI components that pro provide easy usability, an easy user experience, and, and a set of other uh, tools behind that help with the data archival and, and management standards. But in, set, in terms of features, I'll just group briefly, this is just only a uh, small set of the features in Dataverse, but just to get an idea. Uh, so it, it generates automatically a data citation following a standards that uh, well, are compliant with what, what's called the joint declaration the, the, of data citation principles. Uh, those can be found on Force 11 website. Uh, and it's a set of eight principles that establish how to, how to implement data citation. It also follows the standards by a uh, paper by Alman and King, Gary King, uh, uh, the, from, uh, also from IQSS, director of IQSS, that also established data citation for quantitative data sets. It, it also allows you, the Dataverse allows you to brand your own Dataverse. And you will see that as, an, as I show some examples for Dataverses for journals, so that you can customize it and make it be your own virtual archive. Um, then uh, also it provides an extensive, very rich metadata. It's actually one of the data repositories, at least a, a, an open source general purpose repositories that provides more support for metadata. Uh, this, uh, not, 
it's not obviously important to uh, data authors. Uh, sometimes it's not important to journals, so you might tell me that it is, it is for you, but, but it is important to archive, archivists, and, and also it is important back to, for, to, to bring the data back to the community, even though it's not obvious first, because for discoverability, if you don't have enough metadata, it is very hard to then find that data set and know what that data set is about. Uh, it also helps with the API, so uh, having more metadata, not only descriptive high-level metadata, but also at the file level, it helps to get a data file and understand how to use it. So, for example, if it's a tabular data file, you want to know what, what each column is about, what is the, what you would call the variable or column metadata uh, for that data file. So, Dataverse extracts all that information automatically when you deposit the data file. It uses all that metadata for faceted search using the solar uh, engine. And, and it then provides also multiple levels of access uh, control so that it, you can make, publish a data set that might have the metadata public but the files are restricted or they, are, they have to be in compliance with some terms of use. Uh, um, and that's important for sensitive data or for some, some uh, surveys or data collections that involve subject, uh, well, individual subjects information. Uh, it also reformats uh, tabular data files so that you have, um, uh, you, you, you can keep the original format that might be uh, created by a sp specific software, but you also have another, re another format that is more fr user friendly or that anybody can use, well, like a tab delimited or CSV file format that it would be a preservation copy that it doesn't depend on the software that it was created. Uh, in, in, besides tabular files, it, it supports any image or any other text files or any other uh, data types. Uh, and it has also an extensive API, uh, especially with 4.0, with the new uh, version. Uh, this has improved a lot. If there are any new questions, by the way, just feel free to ask. Uh, there is a lot of, of information on Dataverse, but I also want to focus back on the, uh, how it is used for journals. Um, just, just to get an idea, though, on how it is used, uh, there are 10 uh, data repositories that use the Dataverse framework around the world. Uh, and they, all these repositories can be federated. I will talk uh, more in particular the Harvard Dataverse repository, because it's uh, one of the uh, repositories that is open to all researchers and journals uh, around the world. It's open and free. So, um, and it already contains more than a thousand data verses, uh, 58,000 data sets uh, with uh, a large number of files, so 170,000. So. Uh, and so far it has been more than a million downloads of those data files. Um, and it has, um, I mean, of the data sets itself, but, uh, and right now 10,000 registered users. Uh, that's again the Harvard data verse, there are other data uh, large repositories though around the world. Uh, so it supports data verses for individual researchers, for uh, research organizations or journals. And uh, if you can, you can go and see it in the dataverse or harvard.edu. Here's the, that was a screenshot of the homepage. So what are the options for journals and how can we help journals and journal editors with dataverse? So there are three levels of uh, options that go from less integrated with the data repository to more integrated. So if you, if you have a journal and you want to recommend uh, the, uh, the authors to publish, to make the data accessible, they can simply uh, deposit the data to the Harvard Dataverse. They can, uh, under their own Dataverse, uh, their uh, researchers Dataverse, and they can provide just the citation because, uh, to the journal because the Dataverse generates automatically that citation. It has a, a persistent identifier with a DOI, and it has the attribution to the, to the, uh, the data authors. So that's, that's not a, an integration with the journal, but it allows for, uh, for researchers to make the data accessible and um, provide that information to, to journals. There is another step um, uh, of using Dataverse for journals with somewhat more integration. That is, as, as you, if you go, if you see in this, home, uh, this front page, there is an add data button. From there, you have the option to create a Dataverse, and it's as simple as that, that you crea can create a journal Dataverse uh, customize it, brand it as your journal, uh, and then you provide uh, instructions to the authors to 
uh, when they submit a, p a paper of the, or based on your data policy, uh, when, if it's at the time of submission of the paper or later on, to deposit the data into the journal dataverse. Uh, the data as it gets deposited is reviewed by the journal and eventually it's published uh, by, after it's reviewed. Uh, so it makes it accessible to, to everybody. Uh, and there is a third level of integration. There is a full integration with the open, with the journal system uh, and the Dataverse repository. Uh, we build that in a way that it's very generalizable. So that the, we build a, uh, an API to deposit a repository that could, can be reused by other data repositories and, can, and could be used by any journal system. We've done a full integration with the open journal system that already works and, uh, and working with other groups. Well, uh, Sarah here from the Open Science Framework also the, uh, uses uh, that, that same API to integrate with Dataverse. Uh, so, and, and, well, so if I, if I go through, uh, in the case of a journal Dataverse, what would be the workflow uh, for journals and journal editors and, and how they would uh, provide instructions to authors, it would be that, well, the author submits the data set to the journal dataverse. Uh, that data set is in a draft form, so it can be, it's not accessible to the rest of the world, but it can be accessible to the reviewers or to the journal editor, depending again on the policies and the management uh, on the, well, uh, that, that the journal sets. Uh, and then it can, can decide when to make it pub public uh, to the rest of the world, if, it, if it's at the time that the paper is get, gets approved or, or at an earlier or later time, depending on the, again, the policies. Uh, there is the, the option to, again, making the, the data set, well, publish the data set, making the metadata public so that it's discoverable and can be cited, but the files are still restricted. And sometimes, I mean, we don't encourage that because as a default, we give a, a Creative Commons zero license to the, to the data set, so it is made open and easily accessible, uh, but because we, we want to promote this transparency. But when it's necessary, yeah, you can still restrict the data set and set additional terms of use uh, as needed. Uh, also, if there are new versions of a data set in the future, because uh, uh, as we know, a data set is more fluid, uh, could be more fluid than, a, than an, an article or another type of publication. So you can build, then uh, deposit new versions. It can go through the same process of being reviewed and then published. And uh, let me show you a few examples. So one is the American Journal of Political Science. Uh, we'll probably will talk more about that. But uh, um, we just said we didn't coordinate, but somehow <laughs> we, it, it just happened this way. Uh, and actually, they, they've been using the reverse for quite a while, and they have one uh, of the uh, very solid data policies. So, so the, um, and, uh, well, solid and strong data policy. There are a, a large number of data sets and data files already. And I'll let it, well, uh, to you to explain more <laughs> details on this. Um, it, uh, we support dataverses in, in all disciplines and not only in social science across all domains. So um, there, there, is, there is another one in information technology and politics. Um, and, uh, the all, Ubiquity Press has all their journal, all the journals have a journal dataverse, so the data for all the, the publishers' journals are, are deposited in dataverse. And uh, we're working with Elsevier also, and some, uh, well, the open access journals are also have a dataverse. Uh, each one has a dataverse to, to publish um, the data sets associated with their, uh, in some ca case, it's associated with a manuscript. Um, so it, it, these, these are all the examples. There are a larger number of journals. You can go and look at it in the, um, the dataverse harvard.edu. Uh, and for more information about the project in the dataverse.org. You have a, a very, uh, I would say, a vibrant com community, a lot of uh, developers that are contributing. Besides the development that happens at Harvard University, there are contributions from universities all around the world. Uh, and we have, in a couple of weeks, a large uh, international dataverse community meeting. Uh, where we'll discuss also the next, well, how dataverse is used and the next uh, steps for it, for uh, for the repositories. So, 
if there are any suggestions from this audience, we'll, I'll take it to the Dataverse community. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks.